hero with marvelous a Marilyn. Holiday for the new Avengers turns into a nightmare next tonight. Tomorrow at 11:45 on a star childhood to become one of Hollywood's greatest stars. Didn't you just love the picture? I did. But I just felt so sorry for the creature at the end. Sorry for the creature? Why'd you want him to marry the girl? He was kind of scary looking, but he wasn't really all bad. I think he just craved a little affection, you know, a sense of being loved and needed and wanted. That's a very interesting point of view. <laughs> oh, do you feel the breeze from the subway? Having a heat wave. A there has never been anyone quite like her, the legendary Marilyn Monroe. She was Hollywood's most popular sex symbol, and in many ways, the most adored female of the 20th century. We'll explore her remarkable career from her fascinating early appearances to some of her most famous roles. And we'll even show you a few never-before-seen fragments from her last uncompleted film. Marilyn Monroe was, as author Norman Mailer would later put it, every man's love affair with America. Discover how she did it as we enjoy her beauty, her humor, and her appeal. The enchantment of marvelous Marilyn. Hi. You can see by this just how straight my direction is. River Gulch, that's where I started. This is where I am now. And look where I'm going. Where? Hollywood and Vine. Look, straight as an arrow. River Gulch. What happens when you get there? What happens, honey? You get discovered, you get tested with options and everything. And you get treated with a little respect, too. Like a Cinderella fairy tale to Marilyn, who was an unloved and unwanted child that often fantasized of becoming a great movie star, as she revealed in this rare interview. I didn't have enough to get into the movie, but uh, I used to spend the whole afternoon, many Saturday afternoons, Trying to fit my foot in a princess was usually too big. And also, I would get down and measure my hands, you know. And always, they seemed a little large. I don't know, they had very small feet and small hands. I became very discouraged at an early age. Born June 1st, 1926, Norma Jean Baker was an unlikely candidate for stardom. Fatherless and with her mother in and out of mental institutions, she grew up in a dozen different foster homes and orphanages. Always last in line for everything, she would dream of the day when she would finally be noticed, admired, and loved. Hollywood seemed to offer it all. But the road to stardom was not an easy one. She had too much bounce in her knees when she walked, a slight stutter, and a tendency to be what the studios called unphotogenic. All that might have discouraged the average hopeful, but not Marilyn. At first, she took any available job, like this early TV commercial. This is the first car I ever owned. I call her Cynthia. She's going to have the best care a car ever had. Put Royal Triton in Cynthia's little tummy. Cynthia will just love that Royal Triton. Her modeling career led to a few walk-on parts in movies. This was one of her first. A scene in Love Happy with Groucho Marx. Is there anything I can do for you? What a ridiculous statement. Mr. Grenier, I want you to help me. I have a little sand left. What seems to be the trouble? Some men are following me. Really? I can't understand why. Then you two must have a long talk. Her early appearances were brief, and Marilyn knew that she would have to make every second on the screen count, as she does here in All About Eve. You see that man? Well, that's Max Fabian, the producer. Now go and do yourself some good. Why do they always look like unhappy rabbits? Because that's what they are. Now go and make him happy. Honey, those pictures you were taking of me were just marked. 
the running one in the newspaper in a while. They say the rest will surely be taken by the magazine. Thanks a bucket. Not at all, baby. Might as well let the world know you're loaded with talent. The movie world was beginning to notice that she was loaded with talent. But it was her heavenly figure that stole the spotlight in a 1952 melodrama, Clash by Night. I got water in my ear. Huh? I got water in my ear. Yeah, I'll shake it out. Oh, God! How are you hurting me? <laughs> Joe, let go! There were also indications of genuine dramatic potential. She's kind of exciting and attractive. Who's attractive? Who's exciting? Earl! Who? Joe, you're strangling me! Who's attractive? Who's exciting? You. That's better. Later that same year, Marilyn sent audiences reeling with her featured role in We're Not Married. Even the critics were finally beginning to notice what male moviegoers had known for years. But Marilyn wanted to be more than just a shapely blonde in a bathing suit and pleaded with the studio to give her a solid dramatic role. She got her chance playing a psychotic babysitter in Don't Bother to Knock. Do you have a doll at home? Yes, Josephine. What if it cried and pestered and spied on you? You'd want to get rid of it, wouldn't you? You'd have to. You turn over and go to sleep. Don't utter one sound. Then we'll all live happily ever after. Unfortunately, the critics weren't ready for Marilyn's new image and panned her performance. Movie audiences didn't seem to notice. She was still getting over 2,000 fan letters a week. So Fox gave her the big publicity buildup, sent her out on promo tours, gave her acting and singing lessons, and flooded newspapers and magazines with her photos. When Joan Crawford criticized one of Marilyn's dresses as vulgar, the studio sent out this photo with the caption, the farmers of America think Marilyn Monroe looks great, even in a potato sack. Despite the accent on cheesecake, Marilyn still hounded the studio for dramatic parts, and eventually they gave her another chance in Niagara with Joseph Cotton. Where are you going? Here we go again. All right, I'm not going to the bus station. Does that make you feel any better? You smell like a dime store. I know what that means. Sure. I'm meeting somebody, just anybody handy, as long as he's a man. How about the ticket seller himself? I could grab him on my way out, or one of the kids with a phonograph. Anybody suits me. Take your pick. Okay, okay, so I don't know this guy. Uh, Marilyn had learned her lessons well. She literally walked off with a picture, and at the age of 27, was given the opportunity for which she had waited a lifetime. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it was a great book. Greener is a Broadway stage hit, and even more gorgeous, glittering, and hilarious on the screen. With Marilyn Monroe as Lorelei Lee, the world's most fabulous gold-digging blonde. I just love finding new places to wear diamonds.
Change your style. Salon style. Hold your style. Versatile. With Vidal Sassoon, you've never been in better shape. Well, sports fans, a capacity crowd here bored as parrots by this lethargic and sluggish performance. Well, now, hang on. Oh, this could be crucial. Ooh, from here, this man is dangerous. He's capable of crushing the history books. He's rising like a phoenix from midfield. This man has come back like a bolt from the dead, and it's... Yes! Oh, my word! Seth has put it back in the game! And where's the opposition now? Wendell Spanswick has just discovered his favorite lager is available in a brand new can. Guess which one it is. Are you following? Hofmeister, a great lager. Follow Wendell Spanswick. He's not bad. Get what you want, you don't want it. If I gave you the moon, you'd grow tired of it soon. Marilyn was quickly becoming one of Hollywood's hottest and most visible you properties. What you want when you want it. But I Her name became synonymous with sex appeal and glamour the world over. With what you want, you're she was on 16 magazine covers simultaneously and won dozens of awards. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sims. I thank you very much. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks, Amelia. You don't want what you Marilyn get. loved to act like a movie star, and everything she did became newsworthy. But ironically, the attention she had dreamed of for so long was becoming a nightmare. Her personal life was no longer her own. Now, she belonged to the public. Baby, I don't mean to make you blue, but you need a talking to. Cause after you get what you want, you don't want what you want. I know you. Marilyn took the image of the dumb blonde sex pot and raised it above cliché to a level no other star had ever approached. I've never had a feeling oh, like shut this. up. Young lady, you don't fool me one bit. I'm not trying to, but I'd better help. Although many of her movies showed her courting millionaires, the studio realized that it was important that every guy in the audience knew that he, too, had a chance as Tom Ewell found out in The Seven Year Itch. No pretty girl in her right mind wants me. She wants Gregory Peck. Is that so? Well, isn't it? How do you know what a pretty girl wants? Well, I don't really know, but I imagine a pretty... You and your imagination. You think every girl's a dope. You think a girl goes to a party and there's some guy, a great big lunk in a fancy striped vest, strutting around like a tiger, giving you that, I'm so handsome you can't resist me look. And from this, she's supposed to fall flat on her face. Well, she doesn't fall on her face. But there's another guy in the room, way over in the corner. Maybe he's kind of nervous and shy and perspiring a little. First, you look past him. But then you sort of sense that he's gentle and kind and worried. That he'll be tender with you, nice and sweet. That's what's really exciting. If I were your wife, I'd be very jealous of you. I'd be very, very jealous. I think you're just delicate. As the third-rate honky-tonk singer in Bus Stop, Marilyn bewitches cowboy Don Murray and wins the toughest challenge a good performer can have, playing a bad performer. Okay, miss, I reckon you can go on with your song now. And she does it to perfection. Whereabouts were we, Henry? I should stay away. I 
I should stay away. But what can I do? I hear your name. And I'm a flame. A flame. A burning desire. That only your kiss, kiss, kiss can put out the fire. For you're the lover I have waited for. The mate that fate had me created for. And every time your lips meet mine. Darling, down and down I go, round and round I go, and I spin, love and that spin, I'm in under that. Marilyn had the unique ability to combine sex and comedy without sacrificing either. She proved the point for all time in Some Like It Hot with Tony Curtis. You don't say that. There must be some girl someplace that could. If I ever found a girl that could, I'd marry you just like that. Would you do me a favor? Certainly. What is it? I may not be Dr. Freud or a male brother or one of those French upstairs girls, but could I take another crack at it? All right, if you insist. I think you're on the right track. I must be. Glasses are beginning to steam up. In 1962, Marilyn Monroe began work at Fox on a movie called Something's Got to Give with Dean Martin. It might have been her greatest role, but we'll never know. Plagued by personal problems and caught in a web of deepening depression, she was unable to finish the picture. Only these fragments remain, some of which have never been seen before. After shooting this scene, Marilyn celebrated her 36th birthday. Two months later, she was dead. She may be gone, but thanks to the magic time machine of the motion picture, Hollywood has preserved her most glorious moments forever. And that's the way we'll remember the marvelous Marilyn Monroe. Next Friday, we look beyond the Hollywood legend of Marilyn Monroe, whose extraordinary and exotic charisma set her on a public pedestal that overshadowed her great but fragile talent. <laughs>